morning. 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 All right, is God good to you? Yes, he is. Amen. We're getting ready to go to the throne. And first, we, right off, we would like to say, Lord, Lord. Help, us help us to value things, to value things that's most valuable to us. That's most valuable to us. That is, that is our relationship with you, our relationship with you, our family, our family and our friends, our friends, and our finances. And our finances. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For what you are about to do. For what you are about to do. We praise you. We praise you. Magnify you. Magnify you. Glorify you. Glorify you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I would like to take this time to recognize special guests that are here with us this morning. WYTV7 Christian Broadcaster Board Members, Karen LeGrant, who's the President and CEO, Latonya Allen, Board Member, and Executive Producer, Libby Greer. Let's welcome these ladies. Our first speaker is Lynn Dennis. CEO and founder of Demon Enterprise. Lynn Demon, speaker, author, mentor, consultant, and financial rebound coach. She partners with women and businesses, helping each discover the purpose, priority, and motivation to build their legacies. Her simple yet practical effective system empowers people to grow and focus on outcomes, not income. Lynn's philosophy is be generous with what you have, no matter how big or small, mm -hmm. results will follow. Mm -hmm. One single force can change anything in your life, and that is the power of choice. As a financial educator, Lynn's mission is to empower people in making the choice to take control of their finances, because your money ain't got to be funny. Amen. <coughs> One thing I need for you all to do, if you can go, if you can pull out your cell phones, and if you have not already downloaded the QR code reader to your app phones, I need you to do that because you're going to be scanning this barcode, which will allow you to pull up the presentation that Lynn is going to present to you today. So if you, if you have not done that, please go ahead and go to your app store, download QR code reader. Once that pull up, you need to activate your camera, and then you can scan this barcode. And one other thing we would like for you to do is a, let's share this event with other women who are not here today. So if you can join Create a Better You, which is on your Facebook page, if you join that, let's go live and we can share this information with other ladies by sharing it. And you're going to use hashtag Fearless Finances 2017 with no spaces. Let's welcome Lynn Dennis. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's do a little bit better than that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. It's great to be a woman, yes or yes. Yes. I said it's great to be a woman, yes or yes. 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 So today we're here, we're standing in as fearless women. And I'm, I'm looking for my co-host, JoJo, so she can come up here so we can set some ground rules. But as she comes, I wanted to share with you why did we choose fearless woman? Yes, JoJo has written a book about the fearless woman, and she'll tell you all about that. But I also, I was thinking about this, and as we move forward and think about it, one of the major things that's most important to me is the fact that God did not give us the spirit of fear. Right. <laughs> and anything that we have that we are fearful of, it is not of God, it is of an of the devil. Let's just be real, right? Okay? So if you have fear, what I say is face your fear, go ahead and do it in face of that and be the fearless woman that you need to be. What we want to do today is talk about the ground rules for the meeting today. 
No, this is not Vegas, but this is Vegas, all right? So we're going to talk about the things that are real to us and for in regards to our finances. Um, and we ask that you share your thoughts, share the true um, challenges that you have so that we can help you. Um, one of the things that's most important here is in our community, we don't like to talk about our money. You don't sign my paycheck, why you need to be in my business, right? <laughs> okay, so in looking at that, we're going to be thinking about several things. What are the ground rules? Because what happens here stays here. What else do you think should be a ground rule for this conversation today? And before we get started, what's the ground rule? Turn your cell phones off. Turn your cell phones off? Well, turn your cell phones off if you're not going to Facebook Live <laughs> <laughs> to, to stream the information, to share it with other women. But I will also ask you, yes, turn those ringers off. Um, so that's an important ground rule. Turn the ringers off, and I will ask you to do something else where you will engage using your cell phones. So it doesn't really mean no cell phones, <laughs> no ringtones, all right? No ringtones on your cell phones. What else? What would be another ground rule for this meeting as we get started? Be respectful of each other. Right, absolutely. Be respectful of each other. Be respectful of the thoughts and the situations that others have, as well as the ideas that they would like to share. Just because you don't agree with that idea doesn't mean it's not a good idea for that person, and possibly a good idea for someone else in the room. Okay? So make sure we're definitely being respectful of each other. Anything else? There is no question that can't be uh, answered. Yes. At, right, there's no such thing as a dumb question. No one taught us about money when we went to school, right? Right. So this is an opportunity now for us to take advantage of the information in the room. There's a lot of, a wealth of information in this room. Not just looking at us because we're the speakers. You're okay. But also, looking at everyone else, because you also bring your own experience and, and challenges and situations to this meeting, okay? So anything else? We have some great rules, so what happens here stays here. This is Vegas at the higher frequency. <laughs> um, no cell phone ringtone to be respectful, and there's no such thing as a dumb question. Of course, this is a safe place, so you are free to share whatever you want to share, ask any question you'd like to ask, nothing is off balance, <coughs> off limits, and so this is just a safe place. And if there's something you don't want to go Facebook Live, can we say, uh, we have the talking sticks on the table. If it's something that you don't want to go live, hold your talking stick up so everybody can see that, and we'll make sure that those phones are off in that moment so that we can get your question answered or your situation we can discuss, all right? All right. Okay, so the agenda for today, essentially, um, today where are we? We've gone through our introductions and housekeeping. Next, I'll be talking about your money. Ain't gotta be funny. Um, we'll be looking at some accountability measures today. You will be engaging and interacting with us. You will not be staying in your seats the entire time, so don't get too comfortable, okay? And you will also be working together in a team. So if you have to be at a table by yourself or other people can join into, the, into tables with others, that will be helpful so that you can have some true conversations at your table and you won't feel as if you're all alone in this because we are in this together. So why are we here today? When you look at this image on the screen, what do you think? What do you see? Money. You see money? What else do you see? That's a casket, right? Oh. <laughs> That's a casket. One of the first things when I had this conversation with my husband and I showed him my presentation, he said, you sure you want to use that? I said, why? He said, because the message it sends to me is you can't take it with you. Mm. See, there have been tons of people who've tried. We, even in history class, we learned about King Tut, right? <laughs> King Tut buried all of his gold, all of his, even his wives and some of his other belongings in the pyramid with him. And what happened later? Did he go with it? No. no. Where is it now? In somebody's museum, right? Yes. Not even King Tut could take it with him. So let's get that out of the way first. We know we can't take it with us, but we do know 
that we do have to be good stewards of the monies that is that God has provided to us. Yes or yes. 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 Okay. So in looking at this, today what we're doing is planting seeds for you. So we're burying those past bad habits. Those bad habits were just pulling out the credit cards or those bad habits of not investing because you don't know where to go and how to do those bad habits, just plain bad habits, right, or with your money, right? So take those bad habits, we're going to bury those, that's the past, that has no bearing on what we do today in our future. But what we will do is plant seeds, and it's up to you to water your seeds. We're giving you the tools, we're giving you the strategies. You must take action to move to the next level. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. All right, good job. So let's get started. Remember I told you, you will not be sitting in your seat. And I want to welcome you to this event. This will be the first time that I will ask you not to talk. All right? This will be the only time that I'll ask you not to talk. And in this, and you know this is very difficult for me, uh, most of you know that I'm a child of two Baptist ministers, right? And they can talk all day, right? And I can do that too, but that's not the purpose of this meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to get you to think about, to prioritize, and focus on your finances, to be in the room with like-minded people, and maybe people who don't even have the same mindset that you have, right? but to gather ideas, ingrain those ideas into your thinking around your finances so that you can improve. Not only so that you can improve, but so you'll be able to take care of those things that matter most to you. If you care about homeless and you're over here struggling yourself, how are you going to help the homeless community? If you care about Black Lives Matter, but you have no money to funnel to that, to that situation, how are you going to help? Anyone? By the silence, it tells me that you can, right? <laughs> if you're strapped in your finances, you cannot be the economic vehicle to take care of the situations that you care about, ultimately. So now let's look at different ways that we can move forward. So what I would like for you to do, without using any communication, I want you to place yourself in order of your birthday. Don't talk. No linguistic cues means you can't use fingers and all that either. I need you to line up in order of your birth. Our news flash. So what's our news flash? So you all shared today your challenges. You shared your successes and what you plan to get out of this today. But the news flash that I want to share with you is that ultimately, you are responsible for you. No one else is going to take care of that for you. If the government were going to do it, they would have done it by now, right? If right. the president was going to do it, he would have done that by now, and anyone else. So no one's going to save you but you. So the power's in your hand. So let's look at this. We're going to give you knowledge today. What you do with it ultimately is going to determine how you move forward with those things that you said were challenges for you. Lynn didn't say it was a challenge. You told me with your mouth that it was a challenge. You owned that. Now own how do I get out of this, okay? So let's look at it. Knowledge without action is the same as having no knowledge. Amen. Mm. And you might want to write that down. <laughs> knowledge without action is the same thing as having no knowledge. Now I don't condone uh, lottery tickets for anyone. However, it's the same thing as wishing, oh, I wish I won the lottery, but you never got in, right? So when looking at that, think of it in that way. Think of this, knowledge without action is the same thing as having no knowledge. And don't get me wrong, as we're talking about our finances, and you all know that I'm the host of Financial Confidence, <coughs> Confidence God's Way, Tithing is one of the most important financial principles to live by, right? Amen. And this is from the Bible, right? Our yes. basic instructions yes. before leaving earth. There are so many scriptures inside of the Bible that talk to you about your money. Our problem is we fail to read them. 
But I'm going to leave that alone. That's, uh, it's not a sermon today. I'm going to leave that alone. But I thought I'd throw that little nugget out there with you, out there to you. But it does us no good. No good to give our 10% and then we go back and we misuse the 90% mm -hmm. that he's given to us. Let me say that again. It does you absolutely no good to give your 10%. And I'm talking to you about this because I did this myself. I would pay my tithe religiously, but I still wasn't getting ahead in some areas. So you got to make sure that you are also accountable for all, not just a portion. Okay? So in looking at our finances, what I need for you to do, take out your phone, I need you to text something to me. First, I need you to join my text poll. So the number you are texting to is 22333. The number you are texting to is 22333. Okay? And I need you to join my text poll. Your message or your response to 22333 is going to be Lynn Demon 748. You need to join. Once you do that, it'll tell you that you are confirmed. You have joined. Join, you're gonna send a text to 22333, and you need to join my text poll, Lynn Demons 748. Okay? And once you join, you'll receive a confirmation. Have you re anyone received your confirmation yet? You have joined. Okay, you have. Alright, as soon as you receive that confirmation that you have joined, now you can answer this question. What is most important for you when it comes to financial freedom? And when we talk about financial freedom, Essentially, we're talking about being able to do what you would like to do with your finances. <coughs> Whether that's continuing to work or not continuing to work, to retire, to do whatever those things may be. What is most important for you when it comes to financial freedom? Is it A, peace of mind, uh, B, the ability to retire and be financially stable, C, do you want to spend time with your family and your friends? Or D, is the ability to travel and see the world? Or E, is there a other reason? You'll go ahead and text in your response. And I see some of you are responding now. So it looks like for the majority of us who have responded, that it's peace of, peace of mind at 67%. Uh, financial freedom for some is the ability to retire and be financially stable. For others, is spending time with family and friends, okay? So in looking at this information, you see a large portion of us chose peace of mind. We want to be able to sleep at night, essentially. We want those bill collectors to stop calling. We need Freddie, uh, what is it, Sally Mae and Freddie Mac, <laughs> right? To stop calling us, and some of y'all who don't know that, those are the students long people in the mortgage folks, <coughs> um, Naviance, uh, all of those guys, we need them to stop calling us, right? So we want peace of mind or we want to be able to retire and be financially stable. So how do we manage those funds that we do have available to us in retirement and also spending time with family and friends? Nobody wanted to travel? Because that's one of mine too. I, I want to be able to travel and, and just go to all different kinds of places. But I can still work while I'm traveling though, right? That's what I want, that's what I want to do. That's my final destination, <laughs> right? Okay, so in looking at this, why is this most important to you? I want you to respond You're with your answer. Why is that most important to you? Whichever choice you chose, respond, why is that important to you? Why? Is the reason that you chose for financial freedom most important to you? <coughs> Once you type in your message, just send it and it'll pop on the screen.
need you to explain. The future is closer than it seems. Okay, Maya, why did you write that? Because she's Okay. <laughs> so she's in college now. She says in the next year, 10 years, she's going to be grown. She's basically going to get the boot, right? <laughs> so she needs to be able to take care of herself, all right? Because I wouldn't be able to live comfortably while being able to enjoy the things in life that are most important to me, absolutely. To be uh, able to live a more stress-free and comfortable life, I hear you. And because I want to be able to have money in the bank so I can fall back, that I can fall back to in case of emergency, vacations, house, etc. Yes, yes, and yes. Right? So in looking at these things that we're talking about today, if that's what you want, then what's stopping you from getting there? want you to think about that. If those are the things that you want, think about what's stopping you from getting there. And if you truly reflect internally, most of the times we're stopping ourselves. We're our own greatest barrier. I'm not going to point any fingers. I'm pointing at Lynn, right? Lynn was her own greatest barrier, right? Because I would just like the rest of you, me and my sister, we get together. And, and she go to the mall. I go in saying, no, I'm not going to buy anything today. But I come out with her with all these bags, right? <laughs> Anybody else in that scenario? <clears throat> Amen, right? Thank you, Destiny. Thank you for telling the truth. <laughs> right? So it's just, as we look at it, we look at our finances and look at the things that we're doing ourselves, we're self-sabotaging. So how do you move beyond self-sabotaging is basically what we'll be looking at today. How do you get outside of this comfort zone? Because it's comfortable to be able to go in and take your credit card, right? go to Macy's and swipe, get what I need. It's comfortable right, to be able to do all these things. I get paid on Friday. I need to go and do this on Saturday. On Sunday, I don't have any more money. It's comfortable, though, right? For us to be able to have these types of behaviors that we've now inbred into our daily habits. So how do we look at moving? We can stay there in our comfort zone. We can stay in mediocrity. We can stay and just settle. And we can stay and be depressed. And we can stay and have sleepless nights. Or we can move. Thank you. We can move, right? We can move outside of fear. We can move to excitement. We can move to fulfillment. We can move to no regrets. We can move so that we are able to help someone else. Whatever your passion is, whatever that is within you that you would like to do. Because I know I had to realize for myself what that is. I struggle, guys, and um, this is the first time I'm really sharing this, but I struggled. Um, those of you who know my sister Keisha, I struggled when she passed, right? Because she was sick and she was going back and forth to the doctor, back and forth to the doctor, and then she got the cancer diagnosis. And we were sitting there one day and she said to me, Lynn, are you scared? I said, no, I'm not scared. Why did I say I wasn't scared? Because I knew, y'all, without a doubt, without, with everything within me, that God was going to heal her on this side. That was what I knew. And I said, I, hey, there's no way, because God told me if I had faith the size of a mustard seed, right? And I, and I, I believed that. I said, no, I'm not scared. You're going to be fine. But my sister didn't make it. My sister didn't make it. I stopped paying my tithes, and I went around, and I said, Lord, you told me if I had faith, I'm a faithful believer. I paid my tithes, but yet and still, you took my sister. And God said to me, <laughs> he said, Lynn, you, would you have preferred that she stay here in all that pain? You remember what she went through. You remember all the going back and forth to the doctor. Would you have preferred that you, she stayed here for your selfish reasons? Or do you need to get on and do what I called you to do? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, some of you may not know, my sister Keisha, she, she used to help me and getting a lot of things together for this business, okay? Four of them is in pride. She used to help me, and she would say to me, Lynn, if anybody can make it, you can make it. Right? She would tell me that over and over, Lynn, if anybody can do this, you can do this. 
I have no doubt about that. But Lynn, when I had this conversation, when we got to my sister, I didn't, I was like, I don't know what to do. I, I, I was lost. I couldn't find my way. Until we said, Lynn, you have an assignment. And your assignment is to break the spirit of death. And until you get on your assignment and get back to what it is that you need to be doing, you're going to continue to stay where you are. So I had to come out of my comfort zone too, y'all. And I'm not telling you anything that I don't know. I'm not making stuff up. This was reality. And maybe many of you have dealt with similar situations and similar things happening in your families. It may not have been death, it may not have been cancer, but it's something, right, that has happened that you can relate to. And looking at that, think about for yourself, what is your passion? <coughs> when you identify what that thing is inside of you that you've been called to do, all of these other things in your life are going to align, right? That's your finances, your health, any other thing that you touch and any other thing that you do. So as we move forward, we have to move outside of that comfort zone. So in moving outside of that comfort zone, we're gonna talk about our financial confidence strategy. Because oftentimes we tend to wallow in where we are, right? We don't make the necessary changes to move to the next level, yes or yes, right? Yes. Okay, so we need to look at this first and foremost do you believe you have a financial confidence strategy, right? Or do you simply spend as you please? And some of you shared earlier that you do spend as you please, that you're a little bit frivolous with your money, that you um, just spend, essentially, right? And looking at that. And the other question I want to ask you is, does your family beliefs or the way of doing things support your financial confidence? Think about this. Why do you have all those napkins in your dashboard in your car? <laughs> right? So somebody told you at some point you're going to need a napkin, right? To clean up a mess. So when you go to McDonald's or wherever, you get the extra napkins, you put those in your dashboard. Amen. You don't know why you do it. You just know somebody told you to do it, and you keep doing it. Why you got all them plastic bags in your uh, drawer at home? <laughs> You say the bag, why? Somebody told you you're going to need a bag. You don't know when you're going to need a bag. Right? We keep doing these things. We're not questioning why we're doing it, but we're just doing it. And why you got all them ketchup packets? <laughs> right? In that drawer right there by the stove. All the ketchup packets, all the barbecue sauce, all the, all the, you know, all those things. We keep all those things. Why are we doing these things? These are things more than likely that we were brought up doing. I know I got it from my mama. <laughs> Don't we roll you under the bus, mama. But that's what it is. Right? That's where I got it from. But we do these things. Think about it in terms of your finances. What are those things that you're doing with your money simply because that's what you were taught. That's what you did. That's what you saw in your family. And that's why you're moving forward in that way. And then finally, what do we mean by a financial confidence strategy? When we talk about a financial confidence strategy, it's basically doing those things that we know we have to do in spite of, right? We know we have $200, and we know that $200 needs to be budgeted in a certain way, but, right? Ooh, but those shoes, right? We have to go and we have to get them in that moment. So what are some of those things that we can do now so that we develop that confidence strategy that's going to allow us to move to that next level? And why do I say that to you guys? All of that stuff that we talk about is just temporarily going to make you happy. Those shoes are temporarily going to be there because eventually the heels are going to wear out and you're going to be walking like this. Right? <laughs> if you don't get it, right? That's temporary. But what I want you to look at on the other side of that is when you get on a budget, and when you're able to finalize how you save, that's only a temporary pain that you got to push through. Because once you get to the other side, it's just like when you're developing your budget and you're developing those habits, it's like getting up the hill. You can't quite see over the hill yet, but you're getting to the top and you're starting to see a glimpse of what's next. 
But when you finally get to the top of the hill and then you can see all of the beauty, right? That's the same thing that happens in your finances when you finally master a way to not only budget, to save, to invest. And ultimately, guys, it's not about you, but it's about the legacy that you leave. Think about your children and your children's children. How do we break the spirit of poverty that's so prevalent in our communities if we don't learn how to do these things here and now? How do we break those cycles of being broken? Because we want to pay our Jordans or some, what are those shoes? Karachi bought you something. <laughs> <laughs> So, in looking at our financial confidence strategy, what are those things we need to do? So, what uh, we all, I've already asked you this about the area of finances that you're most interested in. What I want you to do at your table, I need you to identify the following roles, okay? At your table, we need a speaker, we need someone who's going to be a recorder. Someone who's going to be a timekeeper, and then everyone else, you are idea generators at the table, okay? Because we're going to be talking about the different components that develop your financial confidence strategy, all right? And after you identify who these people are, we'll be doing a gallery walk. Over here on this side of the wall, and you'll see a couple of uh, chart, pieces of chart paper on that side. There are different topics <coughs> that we'll be exploring, that we'll be talking about, that we'll be delving into. All right? So in looking at this, these are the key essentials for having a true financial confidence strategy that you may want to write down. Okay? Number one you, is your money mindset. What do you think about? How do you deal with your finances? Okay? What are those behaviors that you've developed that are going to propel you in your finances? <clears throat> Number two, we don't like budgets. If you don't like the B word, then write plan. Okay? Write it down as a plan. I know some people just don't like the word budgets, and I get that. Write plan if you don't like budgets. Savings. And you, many of you mentioned that you know that it's a priority. You know that it's a requirement in order to get to your next level. Retirement is ultimately one of those things. If you choose to retire, not saying that you have to retire, because if you study the millionaires and billionaires of this world, they're still working. They do not retire. And that's another concept that I also want to share with you as we move through this today. We talk about retirement, but do we have to retire? If you're truly doing what you love, do you want to retire from that? Just saying. Maybe you need another job. I don't know. All right, investing. We're also going to talk about investing. What are those basic key things in investing that we need to know? What's Forex? What's options? Am I speaking another language for some? Maybe? Must be. Nobody's saying that. No, no one said a word. <laughs> okay? So we'll talk about what those things are. And then ultimately, all of these things combined together build what we call financial freedom, okay? So in looking at each of these different components today is what we'll be talking about, what we'll be working on, and where our strategies will come from. So the first thing I want you to do in this gallery walk, each table will visit the post-it components and you'll have two minutes. What I want you to do is record either exemplars examples, evidence, or questions that you have for each of these components, okay? This can be a current practice or something that you've done or a question that you have, a specific question that you have that you want to address today, okay? So in looking at these, you are sitting at tables with a title, with a, uh, each one of you have a table. What's your table right here, babe? Oh, retirement. Retirement, what's your table? Savings. Saving. So you have a name plate at each of your tables that tell you where you need to start first. Okay? So at your table, go ahead and identify each of those roles. Identify who is your person that's going to be your speaker. Why do I ask for a speaker? Because y'all are going to have to talk to me. Okay? 
Who's going to be your recorder? That's the person that's going to write down the responses from your group. Who's your timekeeper? Make sure you stay on it and helping with the idea generation. Okay? So go ahead and identify those people at your table so that we can go ahead and move to the next <laughs> Okay, so after you have identified your roles, I, you have markers on your table for your recorders, okay? Um, this is the savings. You'll start here by savings table. Financial freedom table, it will start here. Investing guys, budget and retirement, you guys are over here in this section of the room. So you will need to move to this, move to your designated location so you can record I'm still your okay. <laughs> Investing, y'all have to do some math. Y'all gonna have to work together to pull this. Consistency, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
of that $100 needs to be saved. Okay? So 10% of that, pay yourself first before you pay your other bills. Now some people say, wait a minute, Lynn, I can't do that because I'm already behind. Well, I, let's get caught up first and foremost. And that's one of the things we're going to do in our goals with the vision board, is how do you get caught up? What are the things that you're going to do? What are the strategies you're going to put in place? And one of the things we're going to talk about is the debt snowball. Have you heard of the debt snowball? Some of you, are you doing the debt snowball? You heard of it, Have you, are you doing it? Some yes, some no. Debt snowball changed my life, okay? What is debt snowball? I'm gonna stop right here and do that, okay? For the debt snowball, it's essentially taking um, whatever you look, you've already written out all of the finances, that you, everything that you owe, what's the amount that you owe, and what's your interest rate, if there's an interest rate on that particular thing that you owe, okay? looking at them and what I look for are quick wins. What's a quick win? A quick win is the, the thing that I can pay off the quickest that's going to allow me to keep going, right? Why do I say that? Because us, what we do, we go 30 days, we go 60 days, we go 90 days, if we haven't received our miracles, we stop, mm -hmm. right? So look at, look for the quick win, right? Where is that quick win for you? So if it's a credit card that you only owe $500 on, that's where you start, okay? You start on that smallest debt first so you can pay that off, all right? Pay that smallest debt off first. Now you've paid that off. You have some extra money for that month. Don't go spend it. You look at your next bill, okay? What's that next bill and that debt sm snowball that you're now going to add that money to so that you can now pay that debt off. And what you'll do, if you go through and actually do the calculations for each of those debt that you owe, you will see in many cases for the average person, within four to five years, you could have everything paid off with the exception of your house. How lovely would it be to not to have to pay any bills except for your mortgage? And then if you have that, then you're able to now, you have money for those other things that you want to do. You have money now to go and invest. Put your money in this investment account now that it can grow, right? Compound interest is your friend, guys, but we don't seem to take advantage of it because we don't have the funds that we can put now into this investment vehicle that's going to allow us to do that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get on the soapbox, but we're talking about saving, right? So what are the things that we can do now that's going to allow us to identify that? Debt snowball is your number one strategy. I have a debt snowball calculator inside of that tool that I gave you, okay? If you, it's an Excel spreadsheet. If you're not good with Excel, get on the phone with me. I'll walk you through how to put the numbers in there. The formula is already set up. All you have to do is plug and play, okay? And it'll tell you how quickly you'll be able to pay off your finances, all right? So if you got that link earlier, you're in good shape, you'll be able to go in there, but you have, you have the tool, you just have to use it and follow suit, follow through, okay? Um, what else you have in here, sorry. has been the easiest thing that has helped me 
to number one, stay focused, number two, keep it a priority, and number three, to continue. Consistency, right, is the key if you're moving through this process. So automate it, set up an online account, do your due diligence, do the research. All you have to do is Google high interest savings accounts. Google that. You can go online and create an account, transfer the money into that online savings account. The interest rate is not that great, but it's something. It's better than what you're gonna get with a traditional bank, okay? So that's at least a starting place. If you open up an online called high yield interest savings account, if you already have some money, high yield interest CDs, certificates of deposit, this is just a place to keep your money from now. Do not leave your monies there forever, right? Because we miss out on tremendous opportunities when we have these funnels of money. Now what do we do with it, right? What do we do with it? The stock market is a tremendous place. Real estate is a great opportunity. There are other investment vehicles. We were talking about options, day trading, not penny stocks. I'm not a proponent of penny stocks at all, but there are opportunities inside of the stock market that are gonna grow your money significantly in comparison to your traditional CDs and bonds where our community tends to go, <clears throat> okay? And I'm not just preaching to the choir, I'm telling you things that I've done for myself. And I can log into my account right now. The uh, only thing I can't scribble up my account information, but I can log into my account now and show you exactly how I'm diversified. And remember guys, this is for educational purposes only. I'm not giving you any, I'm not saying go invest here in this place, but I am saying to you that there are definitely opportunities that you do the research that you can definitely make some huge financial gains if you're consistent. All right, we're gonna have to try to get through all of these. <laughs> what else do we have? Okay, how much to get, how much to keep in the savings account? We talked about that, we talked about interest. Save with the purpose, that's huge. Save with the purpose, ooh gee, okay, thank you. Uh, save with a purpose. That is huge. Whoever wrote that, that is your number one thing. You have to know why. If you don't know why you are doing it, you will not keep doing that thing. My why, let me tell you this, my why is Malachi Demons, right? <coughs> why is Malachi Demons my why? Lynn worked for the college board. Lynn know that she cannot pass on the college board to Malachi. Lynn wants to leave a legacy for Malachi. Lynn knows that Demons Enterprise, she owns. She can definitely leave that for Malachi. And that legacy can continue, right? So there are different opportunities. That's my why. I've already set the goal, and I told him what the goal was. I said, Malachi, by the time you graduate from high school, you are going to have $100,000 in the bank waiting on you, right? And he keeps, he keeps tabs, don't get me wrong. Malachi keeps tabs. Mama, mm -hmm. let me see my checking account. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps tabs on the different things that we're doing. We have a 529 set up for him for college planning. We have his, he has his own savings account. He has his own, you know, so these different vehicles that we're using to get to that goal, and we have a plan to get to that goal, but that's my why. And I told him, look, buddy, by the time you graduate high school, you'll be able to do one of two things. You'll either be able to go and pay for your college on, with your money, or you'll be able to go and start your own business. Which do you want to be able to do, right? I said, you don't have to answer me right now. He was trying to answer, of course. That's my baby. Um, but I said, this is, these are the options, and this is what you'll have available to you. What do you want to do? See, train up a child in the way he should go, right? So in looking at that, what is your why? What's the purpose? Why are you doing this, okay? If you don't know that, sitting here today is a waste of time for you. If you don't know why, but you do know you in pain or else you wouldn't have come because we either have pain or pleasure from our money, right? We had a pain from the bills, we had a pleasure from the shoes, right? <laughs> you either have a pain or you have a pleasure. And until your pain gets so unbearable, until you get ready to change, you're not going to make that change. It, are you in enough pain that you want to change today? In your portfolios, am I speaking?
speak in another language? Yes? Okay. All right. So when we look at that, that's one of the things that we do at Demons Enterprise is teach people this. What do these things mean? So when you go back and do the research, when you get that prospectus in the mail, because you should be getting them, you're now investing, you get a prospectus in the mail, and you see all these numbers, and you're like, what in the world does this mean? Right? You have to have that basic understanding of the terminology, first of all, that they're using, and then having an understanding of the growth that's happening. Okay? One of the things that we are challenged in is our ability or the amount of risk that we're able to tolerate, okay? And when you start investing, I think one of the things that's most important, thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Sorry. Um, one of the things that's most important when you're beginning to invest is to make sure you do your due diligence. And when I talk about due diligence, do the research, okay? So what are the four keys to investing? The four keys to investing. Say you have $1,000. And you say, all right, I have $1,000 now. I think I'm ready to invest. Or I have $2,000 or $5,000. Maybe you have $10,000. I'm ready to invest. What is the thing that you need to do? What are the number one things that you need to do? First and foremost, educate yourself, right? Education is the number one priority when you're looking at investing your money, growing your money, saving your money, no matter what the case is educating yourself. You need to know, and, and it doesn't cost much to educate yourself. The library is free. There's tons of books on investing there, right? That's at least one place to start, right? And if you don't want to do that, YouTube is your friend. But there's tons of information that's available to you. You don't even have to read it anymore. You just watch a video, okay? And then in addition to that, after you start this process of educating yourself, yes, we want to start at that bare bones minimum so that we can understand what it is, do our due diligence, yes. But you also want to embody the knowledge. You want to ingrate the knowledge. So what does integrate? What does that mean? You want to get around like-minded people who are thinking along these lines as far as investment. Not only do you want to get around like-minded people, you also want to get around people who don't think the same way that you do. Because maybe they'll start to challenge some of those things that you're currently doing and make you say, hey, wait a minute. Why am I doing that? Or why didn't I think of that? Or why didn't I go that way? So they'll start challenge you, challenging you and you'll start to see all of these different things that are opened up to you. And that's not something that we typically like to do in our community. We haven't immersed ourselves into this world of where people are thinking about this all the time. But there are investment groups that you can join here in Greenville, South Carolina, where they actually come together and do things like this. And if there aren't any that's close enough to you, how about you start one? There's a tremendous opportunity. There are tons of experts out there that will come in and give free conversations to you to, to start your own investment groups, okay? At some point, you will have to pay, let me just say that, because the more that you know and the more that you want to know, the more advanced the topics become, and that information is very, not, is, is very uh, valuable, okay? So looking at all the different things that you do, so you educate yourself first and foremost, that's priority number one, take care of you. Educate yourself, because you don't want to go in blindly to this process. Why? Because in many cases, if you're thinking about going into stocks, you need a broker. You need someone that's honest, someone that has integrity, um, because you have fees and commissions. He, he has, gets a commission off of that. So you need someone that's going to help you. They're not going to have 100% your best interest in mind, because they're getting a little bit off the table of that, too. But if you educate yourself, you know how to protect yourself from that. Okay? So make sure. Educate yourself, integrate, immerse yourself into that community of people that are dealing with finances in this way. Then go and get some experience. You have that $1,000 or that $2,000 or that $5,000 that you can now go in and invest. But know the risk. Know that if I use this $1,000 to invest, it's not going to take the food off the table of my baby, right? Know your risk. 
So if you have a high tolerance for risk and you're able to do that and it's not going to impact the way that you live or your daily uh, ability to meet your needs, then by all means, go ahead and jump in. But what I say to you is don't try to go all the way to the end first. Don't just go ahead and, oh, I have this pot of money. Let me just go ahead and throw it in to Walmart. Walmart does a good deal. And I'm not saying there's nothing against Walmart. Sam Walton had a great idea when he started. Let me buy as much stuff as possible so I can sell it to people as cheaply as possible. And as a result, he became a billionaire. And all of us still probably go there today. Right? Genius model. So how do you get in those circles to be able to um, get to that next level, to gain those experiences so that you can ultimately reach the goal that you set for yourself financially? Okay. So any questions that you have at this point on the information that's been shared? Yes? You mentioned a broker. Do you have to have a certain amount to have a broker? If I go to a broker with a hundred dollars, well, they laugh at me. If I go to a broker versus a thousand dollars, and I know the amount will have to determine how serious you are. Uh -huh. So um, I don't understand really the broker. Are they the investor? The broker. Thank you very much. You are a perfect segue to my next slide. <laughs> <laughs> So when you're thinking about buying stocks, um, in order to buy a stock, you have to have a broker. When you think about the amount of money that you have, you need to know for which, which institution that you're going to, what's the minimum amount. Most of them require $5,000 to go in, okay? However, there are some that will do for $2,500. But what I say to you is do your research. Go ahead and look them up. Okay, you have the internet in your, in your uh, pocket, right? On your smartphone. Go ahead and look them up before you submit any funds there. Um, there's tons of information out there as far as what you should be doing. But yes, um, most of them, $5,000 is your entry point. So you have to have that broker. If you want to invest in a particular stock, what you'll have to do, and there are several different things, and I'm going to simplify this a bit, um, but at our future events, we'll be going into more detail in these topics. Okay, so you'll have an opportunity to submit a bid to um, your broker in regards to the particular stock that you want to purchase. And you even tell them what amount you want to purchase the stock at. So if I want to buy Disney, I know Disney is $100, but I don't want to buy Disney at $100. I want to buy Disney at $95. So when the stock price goes down to $95, I won't end. Okay, so you have the option of doing that with your broker. Okay, so there are different opportunities now that you can uh, set once you learn the terminology, learn the different methods um, that are there for, for this option. A lot of people look at this for day trading. Um, if, I hope I'm not speaking too far in left field. Some people use it for day trading. Most of the investing that we talk about in many cases is for long-term investing. Okay? But there are opportunities out there as long as we um, educate ourselves about those opportunities and then have the capital, right? Have that money set aside where we can actually go in to the opportunities. All right, keep, 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 keep me on task, all right? Um, so for your financial confidence, those essential questions that you need to be mindful of as you develop your strategy. This is your financial freedom plan. First and foremost, the number one thing that you do, this is your number one priority. Your number one priority is to know your why. And in knowing your why, you'll, it'll help you to identify your money mindset. So you have to have the right mindset to focus on this. And you're, you've taken that first step because you're here today. You've taken that first step so that you will be able to ensure that if you continue, if you're consistent, right? Consistently educating yourself, consistently following up, consistently budgeting, consistently saving, consistently investing, you'll have the opportunity to move. 
and I, I wanted to share this one story, and you all may have seen this. Uh, I can't remember the man's name, but he was on every news channel. He was a security guard. He made, what, $14,000 a year. And he told his story of how he invested $20 every paycheck. $20 every paycheck. And then by the time he, he uh, retired, or by the time he was, what, was 60-something, or he was retiring, he had $700,000, excuse me, $14,000 a year salary, but he said he amassed $700,000, right? And if he can do it, by golly we can, right? What did he say was his number one priority? Consistency. Ensuring that he did it every time, okay? Now it's not only consistency, there's some other things that you have to do. First and foremost, educating yourself right? Knowing where you're going to invest those dollars, but having that money mindset. So how do I start like he did with baby steps? Think about a baby. They crawl before they walk. That's the same thing you have to do with your finances. Because you've been doing this for how long? Mm. And don't expect it to change overnight. It doesn't. It's about consistency. Doing, we're in this for the long haul and training up your children to do the same thing, and your children's children. And they'll be saying, Destiny, my grandma Destiny used to tell me, <laughs> right? So you also need to know how much can I afford to save? Don't go out here and try to kill yourself and then you can't eat, <laughs> right? Because you're trying to get to this, if you need to do 2% and then later, the next year when you get a raise, increase to 4% and then a the year after that, increase to 6%, do that. But no, first and foremost, you gotta know where you are. What are those small things that you can do, that you can change now, that are going to help you live, like Dave, Ram Dave Ramsey says it all the time, live like nobody else. It's temporary right now, right? <coughs> it's a temporary struggle that you don't have to stay in. Do you suggest that your emergency fund be separate from a savings fund? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely mm -hmm. keep it separate. Why keep it separate? Because if you see it over there in the same place as your savings fund, like some, somebody said it earlier, That's I see okay. my savings sitting over there and I just got to go get it, right? Yeah. Put it in a separate location. And that's where an online savings account is going to be a better option for a lot of us. In an online savings account, there are some extra things that you have to do to get your money, right? <coughs> you put it in an online savings account, you can't just go in there and get it that same day. They have to go in, process the transaction, then send it back to your regular bank so you can get your hands on it. You'd be like, man, I gotta wait that long. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Would it be beneficial to have one savings account as far as because that process is good if you're trying to save in the long run, but if you need to get to your savings immediately, it would it be wise to have a savings account with your bank and then have like a savings account online? Yes, ma'am. So the question is, is it wise to have more than one saving account? It absolutely is. I have five. <coughs> I have them for different reasons. 
I have a traditional savings account that I put money in just in case. Or maybe I want to go do something frivolous because you don't give up everything. You don't give up all your fun. You got to go get your hat on. Right? You don't give up all your fun. So I do have my fun savings account. I have my emergency fund account. That's a separate savings account. And like I told y'all earlier, I, I like to travel. I've been able to go a lot of different places, and I'm thankful to God that I've had that opportunity. But I'm also thankful for my travel savings account. Right? It's not a problem for me to be able to go into that account and say, oh, I want to go here. Oh, I don't have enough dollars in that fund yet. Right? Or, oh, I do have enough money to be able to do that. So having those <coughs> multiple savings account depends on, I have them for different things. I even have one for Christmas. I know me. And I know my family. <laughs> what of them want some Uggs? <laughs> really? <laughs> right? So I have savings accounts for all those different things. So yes, I do highly recommend that you do that. Put it into practice so that you have an opportunity. Separate that money out. Be intentional with what it is that you're doing. And your bank, don't think your bank is going to frown upon it. Are you going to open up another account? By all means, right? <laughs> and if you don't want to have it at the same bank, that's also fine. Because I have some with my credit union. And I do have some online as well. It just depends upon what I'm using those funds for. And how quickly I want to be able to access them. Yes? Since you do have so many savings accounts, do you have to have a certain limit of how much you have in each account um, or are you worried about what do you do it where if one account is low you can then pull from a different account? I I intentionally do not do that. And the question is if you have these multiple accounts, basically how do you manage that, right? If you have a monies over here at this bank and monies over here at that bank. I'm intentional in the way that I have my finances set up for that purpose that I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it, right? So in looking at that, if I don't have the money in there, no, I am not going to rob Peter to pay Paul. I'm not going to pull from my travel fund to go over here unless it's a true emergency. A true emergency is this. I'm on the side of 85 and my tire is flat and there's nobody else that's going to be able to come and get me. That's a true emergency. Emergency is not, oh, those red bottoms look good. Yeah. Right? Tammy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, being intentional with your finances and making sure that you follow the strategies and simply being consistent. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, I have a question. <clears throat> And I think um, some people may be at this level and some may not, but maybe it's a good talking point. So if we if we know we're at zero, like my money covers my deal, period. I have a kid, you know, one in college, one in middle school. Um, so for me, and I've done this, I mean, and I hate the word budget, so she was talking about me, I hate the word budget. Um, so what I've done is, I, I, I call it my, I'm trying to help you out, girl, fun. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out because this is a mess. So one of the things I found it easy, and this is something I've done at all my jobs, is even though if I know all of my money is allocated, I'm starting with my 401k because that money I automatically don't see. And, you know, you don't, like she said, out of sight, out of mind. So maybe 401k, if you know you don't have zero and you're trying to find the extra money besides getting an extra job, I set aside on my 401k. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I know my employer is matching my money, yep. and I can go in there and be like, oh, "You go, girl! I'm feeling it." So, mm -hmm. Even though you know there's a process, and I'm not going to touch that money, you know. So that's a good way for it not to be immediate to me, but at least I know in case of emergency, mm -hmm. I, I have that as well. Yes, yes. Thank you. That's a that's a great point. Don't pass up free money. A lot of us, our companies are matching funds in our retirement plans, and we're not even putting anything in there up to the match. I don't care if it's only 2%. That's 2% free money that you can be getting. If you get nothing else, get that. <laughs> okay, keep us holding up the sign for me. All right, it's, it's break time. All right, last question. It's break time, but before you go. 
If you would text to me, what will you do differently as a result of this discussion today? What will you do differently as a result of the discussion today? All right. 